Well, hello. Thanks for coming back to check out another video. So, we are here today to sit down and talk about my favorite A to Z eyeshadow shades. Now, I do have to say, I did this video about a year ago, I guess. I will leave that link down in the description box. I did not reference that video. I did not want to be swayed by it and think like, oh yeah, that was a favorite shade. Look, let me add that in this time. So I have not looked at that, but I do remember after I did that video, I like thought like, oh, this is a really nice, like Haley inspired cohesive color story. So I thought it would be fun to see if we get that again today. I do want to first say before we get into this, that this was very much inspired by Jen Phelps. She did this, I guess about a year ago, since that's when I did my original video. However, I think with hers, it was more like my favorite makeup products A to Z. So like for instance, for B, she could have put in something from Benefit or she could have put in like the Brow Wiz from ABH, like as long as you relate it back to that letter. And then I do remember seeing Alejandra Lissette or Alex as we all know her do this and I'm not mistaken, I know she did theme hers specifically around eyeshadow palettes, but I can't remember if it was like my favorite palette and like the palette name started with a B or the, the makeup brand started with a B for instance or if she did her favorite shades. But I will of course leave her and Jen, their videos in my description box. And then I know for a fact that Laura did this video as well, like her favorite A to Z eyeshadow shades. So I'll leave that down there too. Maybe we can all like low key pressure Laura into filming this again. Cause I think like me, her makeup tastes have changed like her preferences for colors and eyeshadows. And I know her eyeshadow palette collection as well as mine has also changed. So I just think it would be fun to see those differences. Of course, if you would like to do this, please feel free. I would love to see any and all videos. You know here we cannot get enough of eyeshadow palette content. Okay, so I know last time when I picked it, it I said like, oh, like some of these, they had to be my favorite shades because it was like the only shadow in my collection that started with a U. So since my palette collection has changed so much, it was a little bit easier. Now, some of the shadows I did kind of, um, we'll say stretch a little bit like the you know the how you got this shadow related to this letter like I did have to stretch it a little bit because this time I really did want them to be favorite shades as opposed to like well I just picked it because it was my only U shade you know what I mean like Q definitely the shade I picked for the letter Q does not start with a Q but it has a Q in the name you know what I mean I also tried to only represent a palette one time during this you know 26 options only trying one time the three palettes i'm holding i believe each of these got referenced twice so i have the blend bunny the dollhouse palette and then i have the heather austin collab with adept cosmetics as well as the angelic unique vis collab with uden's eye the hella palette those yeah i think they pop up two two times each the other thing is that I wanted to only include palettes that I have actually used. Now that doesn't mean only the palettes I've used in 2022. It just means like across the board, like have you used this or have you not? If you have not used it, then you cannot pick a shade from that. I just didn't feel like it was fair to include things that I haven't actually tested out on my eyeballs. Okay, so some of these letters came like a lot more quickly to me than others. Like I knew for instance, like oh, this is the P shade I want, or this is the R shade, or the S shade, or the, you know, whatever. And so I kind of like built my list around that. Like I picked out the shades that came to mind first that matched that letter. And then I kind of went through my collection and found the others to like kind of fit into the alphabet. That's just how I approached it. I'm not gonna ramble anymore. You guys are just here to see what are my favorite shades, A to Z. Let's take it from the top. We will go and start with A. Before we start though, Pause the video. Out of the 26 letters of the alphabet, how many shadows do you think are green? Or do you think a new color is represented this year? Because I'm pretty sure last time I had a bunch of green eyeshadows. Anyway, let's kick it off with the letter A, of course. So I'm going to dip into the It's Freaking Bats palette. This was a collaboration between Batty Bean and Shroud Cosmetics. This was not a shade that came to mind right away, but when I was looking through like eligible A shades, this one really did steal the show. So it is the shade here, Apparition. It is just this really pretty, like almost lavender purple shade that has like some gold shifts to it. Let me also say, I am super bad at describing shadows if they're duochromes or multi-chromes or just shifty shades. So I really just use those words interchangeably. Please don't get mad at me. 
that's just how my brain handles it but anyway apparition at the end of the day is still a really pretty shade and i think that it's one of the like more brighter shimmer shades that this palette offers you and it's one of the shimmer shades that really goes well with every single matte shadow that is available in this palette so i just think it's really interesting for those reasons all right i think you're going to be super surprised by my b shade because it's a pastel i know i know this shadow did come to mind right away well i didn't i didn't know that it came to mind right away for the b shade because i forgot the name of it but like the shade itself i knew i had to include this so we're going to dip into the natasha denona zendo palette i'm going to try to not blind you guys with this but this shade right here this minty pastel great green shade is called breath and i absolutely love it it is the star of the show in this palette for me which i feel really weird saying because hello who is Haley liking pastel shadows this one is just so easy to work with so fun to work with and i absolutely love using this shadow as like an all over lid shade and doing an all matte look so again it was just a really easy like choice to put this one in here because one it does come to mind but two it's a shadow that really has like pushed me out of my comfort zone and made me try new things. It's also one of her cream to powder shadows and I just feel like those are easier to work with and blend out and help you to get more comfortable with shadows that you do find intimidating because since that it is that cream to powder formula, it just makes it a little bit more effortless. All right, so let's talk about the C shade. We are gonna dip into a BH, BH Cosmetics palette. It is our first BH Cosmetics palette on the list. So this is the orange sherbet palette from their Sweet Shop collection. I picked this shade Citron, Citron? Yeah, Citron right here. You're gonna see the shade names on there. We all know Haley can't read English well. Um, but it is just this great peachy, orange, golden, pink, shifty shade. Like there is just so much going on with this shadow. It's a really unique shadow within my collection. I would classify it in with like my other orange shimmer shades. And this is hands down my favorite orange shimmer. I just feel like this type of shade lends itself to being paired with so many different eye looks. Like you don't have to pair it with oranges or with browns. Like you can pair it with greens. You could pair it with purples. You could pair it with like more neutral colors. Well, I guess I already said browns, but you get my point. Like it's just one of those really unique shadows that you can just do so much with. All right, so D, this is the first time we are gonna dip into the Hella palette. So this one was an easy one, and I know it's gonna be a little bit funny because it's like one of the most weird shades, I guess, that you could pick to be a favorite shade, but it is the shade Decay here, and it is like this matte, taupey, gray, green, brown kind of color. Like it really just depends on what you pair it with. Sometimes it does lean more gray, sometimes it leans more like brown, and sometimes it does lean more green. But I just feel like it's such a unique shadow. It is one of those interesting matte shades that really can help you to transform your look and get it going into the direction that you want it to. So I was really surprised that this shadow even ended up on the list because like I said, it's a matte shade and looking at it in the pan, it just looks really unassuming, but it's not. It's actually like a really unique shade. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about our E shade. Honestly, this I think this one was the last shade that I ended up coming up with on my list. I surprisingly don't have a lot of shadows that start with an E or if they did start with an E they weren't like a favorite shade so then I did come across this shadow from the Limoncello palette and it is a favorite shade I just I don't know I didn't think of it right away like it didn't come to mind I don't know if I thought that this shadow was called something else but either way it is the shade easy peasy here I really love this one it is a green I would call it like a duochrome like it goes from like almost this limey green to like gold to like red like it's just it's really pretty it's really interesting and i just love this palette as a whole so it was kind of easy to pick this shade in that sense because i always have such an easy time working with it since this palette is so good you know what i mean but yeah absolutely do love that shade another green shadow on the list Speaking of green eyeshadow, we're gonna segue into our F shade. Now this shadow was the very first one that came to mind. This is hands down one of my very favorite all-time green eyeshadows. It comes from the Kaleidos Club Nebula palette that they did in collaboration with Aniela Kanikvist. I am trying to open my palette the wrong way. I'm going to hold it like this. Woo. See, it's kind of awkward, I will say that. 
But anyway, the shade Firefly up here. Now I do have pan in this shade. I will try to bring this one in just so that you can see it. I know I just recently posted like all my pans of eyeshadow. I ended up hitting this pan the very next day after filming that video. But either way, Firefly. It is just this really great like all over the lid shimmer shade and it does look very much more like a, a minty kind of shimmer on its own. However, every single shimmer shadow in this palette through my experience it's um, you can use them as like topper shades. So I really love to use Firefly and just try it out on like whatever eyeshadow I want and see how it transforms it. Sometimes it takes on more of the mintiness that Firefly offers. Sometimes Firefly takes on and kind of like turns shadows into like a lighter version of themselves and gives them some like green shift to it. Like I'm thinking the one of the last times I used it, I put it on top of a purple shade. And so the purpleness still retained very much of its purpleness, but Firefly gave it this kind of like golden green sheen to it. It was just, it's really unique and really pretty. If you own this palette, just try using Firefly as a topper shade across like whatever color it is that you're feeling. I have yet to find a bad pairing. All right, so for the letter G, sometimes the brand name matched up with the shadow name, which I thought was kind of funny, but we're gonna go for Give Me Glow. So this is the Christmas Morning Palette. So my G shade that I picked is this one here. This is Gifts Galore. This is such a fun shade. It's not necessarily unique to my collection. This is very much like the sponsored eyeshadow from the ABH Jackie Ina palette. So if you own that one, don't feel like you, you know, need to run right out and buy this as a single. You've got it. Um, but this, like the Give Me Glow formula, their shimmer shadows just are very like one easy to work with but they're they're the type of shadow where you don't need a sticky base you don't need to like wet your brush you don't need to fuss and fool like they will always turn out so pretty and so intense on your eyes so it was kind of easy like i knew i wanted to include this palette at least the one time but then when i opened it up i was like yeah no hands down this gifts galore shade is my favorite shade like from within this palette it can be my favorite g shade across the board absolutely stunning all right our h shade we are going to dip back into bh cosmetics you guys can guess it's going to come from the avocado toast so it's going to be a green shade but for h i did have to go with the shade haas here in the palette now the background of this is super reflective haas is one of those green gold kind of olivey shades i don't tend to I don't really like straight up gold and I don't really like brassy gold, but you give me like a tarnished gold, we will say, where it has that little bit of green to it and I am all here for it. Like I absolutely love it. I think that it looks super flattering like on my skin, on my eyes, like paired with my hair, paired with my eye color, whatever you want to say. But you take that greenness out of it and make it a straight up gold shade and I'm like, ew, that's nasty. Um, so yeah, this hands down was one of those shadows too that came to mind right away. It's just a favorite shade throughout my whole collection. Like this would be one of those shadows where I'm like, I really don't want to live without it. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those shadows where I think if you just had your eye on that shadow from this palette, it's the palette is still worth it. Does that kind of like make sense? Okay, so the eye shade, this is a newer palette to me, but this is from Sugar Drizzle. This is the In a Pickle palette. Is it the In a Pickle? Paint me green and call me a pickle because I'm done dealing with you. There you go. Um, so anyway, this is a really fun six pan eyeshadow palette. I will say if you own the Avocado Toast, you already have these two matte shades within that palette. But the shimmer shades in here are really interesting, really unique. They are duochromes. Like this one to me looks like a gold, but I think to you guys it looks like a pink shade. This like middle shade up here is like, it shifts from like a blue to a purple. Just really interesting. Not what we're here to talk about really. Uh, the shade I picked for our eye shade is called In a Pickle. It is just this really pretty, almost like, electric shadow from subculture you know what i mean that's very much the vibes that it gives me it's a really pretty shade on its own it's a really pretty as a topper shade it's a green shadow how much more do i need to rave about it you know they're my favorite all right so let's talk about our j shade name now it's a little bit it's a sentimental reason that i kind of picked this one out but it is also like a favorite shade like I, I like i said in the introduction i'm not just picking shades to pick shades because they match the letters but this was just like a happy coincidence 
that this one matched and like I said it does have like some sentimental meaning to me so we're gonna dip into the Natasha Denona retro palette and the shade that I picked is called Jude it's just this absolutely pretty taupey gray kind of purple shadow it really lends itself to this palette as a whole really well now typically i'm not a person who wants a dark shimmer shadow on my lids i really like my shimmer shadows to be bright and fun and poppy and play around with more darker matte shadows however this is one of the few dark shimmers that i can really get behind feel very comfortable wearing it on my lids i just absolutely enjoy it i don't know if it translates on camera but there is like a little bit of like a pink kind of not glitter but like a pink undertone to this shade as well so again I feel like that helps helps it lend itself to being quite cohesive with a lot of the shadows in this color story and then topping that Jude shade with the psychedelic shade which is like the topper shade within this palette really makes for some pretty intense and like just fun eye looks all right there's a lot more greens in here than I remember but I think when we get to the second half of the alphabet that changes and a different color comes along but anyway for our K shade we're gonna dip into the tribe palette now I'm not sure but I think that the K shade came from this palette the first time but it was a different K shade so this time around we're gonna go with the shade Coro which is this shadow right here this again is one of those shadows that kind of gives me electric dupes from the subculture palette but this one is much more of a white base whereas electric and some of the other greens that have been in here do have more of a green base with a gold shift this one is a white base shadow that has a gold green shift to it so it's more on like the limey side but if you've been pining after subculture and you have this palette i feel like you can do a lot of the same similar like vibes a lot of the same like similar looks as you would get with subculture using that electric shade so anyway no surprise that i'm picking another yet again yet again green eyeshadow to represent in here but this one also is a little bit of a show stealer within the palette we will say because not only is it a really pretty like lid shade it's also one of those shades where if you use your finger tap it into the pan and then tap it over like whatever shimmer shade you have going on on your lids it's going to transform it and give it more of this like kind of limey green shiftiness to it it's just really pretty okay l was a little bit of a harder shadow and i know we just got done talking about like ugh, i don't like gold shades this is the only gold shade that i like and i think it simply boils down to it's the color story of the palette it just lends itself really well to working with this particular gold shadow so it is from my nabla dreamy 2 palette the shade i'm talking about is the shade libertine right here and it very much does have a little bit of that brassiness to it not like a bronzy gold you know definitely a brassy gold in my opinion but like i said it's one of the it's the only gold shadow that comes to mind within my collection where i'm like yes i actually like using that it's not a struggle to reach for you and again i think it's simply just because the overall color story of this palette lends itself to really working for that shade um libertine or l in general i guess was another one where it was like i don't have a lot of l shades so when i laid them all out it was like no i want to pick this one because it's one of those shadows that has like pushed me out of my comfort zone and made me like more adventurous you know okay so let's talk about our m shade we're going to dip into the kaleidos uh, futurism palette this is number six this is lunar lavender now in some other videos where i've showed off this palette i kept calling this shade uh wisteria it's actually moon roof so with these futurism palettes just in case you didn't know the shade names aren't printed on them they're just printed on this little plastic insert and mine constantly gets like moved around and i mix up the shade names at the end of the day it's no big deal but i did like pull up a picture so that i made sure like i wasn't putting in a shadow with the wrong name for this video you know what i mean so anyway the shade we're going to talk about is the shade moonroof which is right here um, again i kept calling it wisteria so i do apologize about that but this is one of these like really interesting uh shifty shadows it very much has like a purple base to it that shifts to blue to pink now i will say this shadow is very much more you'll be you'll be more successful using it as a topper shadow in my opinion i just i really find that if you 
try to use it as a straight up shimmer shade you're gonna have to like really pack it onto your eyelid and then I feel like it always looks just a little bit like cakey a little bit creasy but if you put like down a really dark like maybe black or really dark purple shimmer shadow first and then use your finger go in with this and top it off you're still gonna get that same effect that really pretty like icy blueness icy purpleness that comes through so yeah I really do enjoy this shade Okay, so let's talk about our end shade. This one was, again, one of those ones that came to mind right away. Maybe you think I'm cheating a little bit because technically the shade name starts with V or like a T, but I'm not going to count that. Like, you know, what, the library wouldn't count V, right? Like they would just organize the books if they were doing it by title and not count V. Either way, I'm going to dip into the Nomad America's Parks palette. This is the shade called The Narrows. Now, in the pan, this just... I, honestly, this looked like one of the most boring shades within the palette, in my opinion. But I used it. I did a halo eye with this. And I have to say, I haven't dipped into every shadow within this palette just yet. But I have a feeling that the Narrows is going to be the, the like show stealer out of this whole palette for me. It is just this really pretty kind of pink based pinky red based shadow that has this really intense like gold orange flip to it. I have just absolutely fallen in love with it. I think it's really pretty. I am super excited to pair it with some of the other matte shadows within this palette. Like I first paired it with the purple and the brown really pretty look but i want to try doing just a halo eye again and doing it with the greens and then again with like maybe the red and the yellow and just seeing because i really do think it's going to be one of those shadows that is just so unique and interesting and pairs so well with like everything you know what i mean okay so i ran out of room on my arm for the swatches so the first like grouping of swatches is the a through the n shade now we're going to move on and we're going to do the o through the z shades and then i'll show you like an overview clip of it i really wish i could have fit everything onto one arm but i just was not able to accomplish that so kicking it off let's start with our o shade I'm gonna dip into the Juvia's Place, the Festival palette. Now this was a palette very much where I enjoy every single eyeshadow out of here. So I knew this was a palette that would get featured at least once within this video. I just didn't quite know where, you know? So I decided to go with the O shade. So we picked Ofala, I believe is how you say it, but it is this shadow up here in the corner. I feel like on camera, this shadow always looks like it's going to be kind of a we'll say lighter red shade, you know, but it doesn't. It's very much a pumpkin orange shade. It is just really pretty and it's really unique within my collection as a whole. I don't have another shadow quite like this one. So I just really enjoy it. You guys have heard me rave about this palette so many times. I just feel like this is one of the most underrated color stories. Like it really, it's very cohesive even though it doesn't look that way and it looks so chaotic. Okay, so this is a palette that I have not had for very long, but the two shadows, this spot for P being the first time you're seeing it, if I'm not mistaken, the two shadows in this palette came to mind straight away. That is how much I have fallen in love with them. So we're going to dip into the Adept palette that they did in collaboration. Why do I always phrase it that way? It's not like the brand did the palette. The person did the palette. You know what I mean? So this is Heather Austin's palette that she did in collaboration with Adept Cosmetics. It's a much nicer way to phrase that. Anyway, Passport in here. Oh, I just, I don't know. I've just so fallen in love with this. I can never get the shift on camera and the ring light's going to like glare the palette out. So hopefully in the swatch, you'll be able to see it, but it is just this really pretty shade that goes from like purple to blue to almost like an icy kind of minty green shade it is just so unique and so interesting like i said i've just absolutely fallen in love with this palette as a whole i will say the adept shimmer formula is a little bit more on the flaky side and typically i don't really like uh eyeshadow formulas that are like that because i find that they tend to make my eyelid look creasy and kind of cakey but I don't experience that with these adept shadows I've really had a lot of fun with them I think that they're quite pretty you know it's just a brand that I have fallen in love with all right so the next one is Q and like I said in the beginning I didn't I do have shadows that start with a Q but I really only wanted to include things where it was like no this is actually like a really good shadow a really favorite shade so we are going to dip into the blend bunny the dollhouse palette for the first time too I believe 
So the shade that I picked to represent Q, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's okay. It is the shade Harlequin down here within the shimmer row. Now on camera, I feel like it just, um, well, I mean, it is a black shade. I don't know why I was about to say, like, I feel like on camera, it looks like just a black. Anyway, um, it is a black shimmer shade and it is a really intense black shimmer shade. This is the, this is only the second black, no, it's the third black shimmer that I have in my collection now. I used to only have the Juvia's Place one from the Festival palette. This one is probably the most intense black shimmer that I have and I just really love those shades. I feel like they are a staple for me. Give me a black shimmer all day long over a matte black. It is just easier to blend your shimmer shades into shimmer shades and so if you really want that depth in your outer v having a black shimmer shade just makes your life so much easier so yeah this one was really it wasn't easy it was one of the last shades that i picked but when i saw the q within the name i was like no i'm gonna put it here for q because this really is just like a staple kind of shadow within my collection Okay, so much like with Firefly being the first shadow that came to mind from the Club Nebula palette, surprisingly, I think this was the second shade that came to mind, and it's another Angelic and Nikvis collaboration. So this is the Odin's Eye palette, the Hella palette that she did. So the shade River, I think I just blinded you with the mirror. I'm so sorry. But this shade River right here, oh, I just have absolutely fallen in love with this. Again, it's one of these like duochrome shifty shades. It goes from like a purple to a blue. It is very similar to the Passport shade from the Heather Austin Adept Cosmetics palette. However, what I will say, the biggest difference between the two of them is that River is a little bit more muted and it's not, it doesn't have as much of like an icy shift as the Passport shade does. And the Passport shade does give me a little bit more of that like minty icy shift. You know what I mean? So I think that they are different in their own respect, even though I feel like on camera they're going to look quite similar. However, I absolutely love this river shade. I think it's very unique for in this palette and it's one of those, again, shades that's just like a workhorse shade. Like it goes really well with so many things within the Hello palette. Okay, so let's talk about our S shade. This was a shadow where I just had to put this in because it's one of those shadows that's really unique. So it comes from the BH Cosmetics Emerald Palette. This, when I open it up, I have some palettes in my lap that are getting ready to fall. Uh, when I open it up, this shadow is just gonna look like an unassuming brown. So it is this shade right here, Stubborn. It's one of those brown shades where dependent upon what you put it with, you are either gonna get just like a straight up brown or you're gonna get one of those plummy browns. And I have just absolutely fallen in love with those types of shades, even though they are kind of boring. I feel like in the swatch clip, this definitely has more of the like plummy vibe to it, like plummy brown vibe. But like I said, you can pair it and like get it to change and really make or break a look. You know what I mean? I've never had it break a look, but it can really help you out. All right, for tea, we're gonna go back into the Blend Bunny, the Dollhouse palette. I am surprised that this shadow, this, not like this shadow, um, I'm surprised that this particular type of shadow, this particular type of color, we will say, never makes it onto these lists more often than like one or two times because I would say that it is absolutely one of my favorite type of shades. So for T, we're gonna dip into this tool shade, tool, T-U-L-L-E, -L -L -E, I don't know but it is this shadow right here. It is a light pink shadow that has a gold shift to it. I just feel like these are so effortless to wear and so fun for spring, but they're really fun for any time around. And again, it's one of those shadows where it just pairs so nicely with so many things. I would say that a pink shadow with a gold flip is one of my most favorite things. And yeah, it just, I feel like it's always a shade that's just underrepresented when we do these types of videos and we talk about our favorite shades, you know? But yeah, really happy that this palette made a second appearance in on the list. Okay, let's talk about our U shade. This was also a shadow that came to mind right away. So we're gonna dip into the Citrine for November palette by BH Cosmetics, the shade that I chose to represent you that is the favorite, like the favorite shade across my collection is the matte yellow, Unique. This is hands down my best matte yellow within my collection like a primary matte yellow you know what I mean it is just so impactful on like one little swipe you know what I mean like you just dip your brush in you do your eye look it looks good like you can build it up if you want to and you really want to like make it I guess super super bright and intense 
but just dipping in one time is more than enough. It never fails me. It never ceases to amaze me. A lot of the other matte yellows within my collection are just underperforming in comparison to this. They are shadows where you do have to constantly like build them up, you know, to get that same intensity, but not with this one. It is a one hit, not a one hit wonder. It's a one swipe wonder. We'll go with that. All right, so let's talk about our V shade. It comes from the ColourPop Sonic Bloom palette and the packaging of this is super reflective, but it's the shade, what is it? You'll see it on the screen, but it's this blue shade down here. This shadow very much reminds me of Glass Bull. That was a single from them, but Glass Bull was a little bit more on the flaky side and I just never really fully enjoyed working with that shade. This particular shadow is not like flaky in any way, but it very much has that like blue kind of purple shift to it that glass bowl did again this is a color that's very reminiscent to the river and the passport shades that we've already talked about i think it's just a color where i've like so fallen in love with it and so when i was making my list i didn't realize just how similar these three end up being but they are all a little bit different in their own right like i would say passport has the most intensity to it and then river has like the most depth to it and then this one's just kind of like it's not as impactful but it still is really pretty on the lids and I do greatly enjoy it okay so let's talk about our W shade we are gonna dip into the ColourPop lush laugh palette again a super reflective background so I do apologize but I went with the shade wildlife here now again it's a gold shadow but this one very much kind of reminds me of Mary Luminizer it is a pale gold that is very much of like a white base shade I really love to use this as an inner corner highlight I just think that it looks really pretty and really effortless and it really kind of ties in the whole look especially if you're doing something a little bit more dramatic you know what I mean like if your shimmer shades and your matte shadows are really intense I like to have still an inner corner highlight but i like for it to be much more of like a toned down kind of shimmer or maybe even a matte shadow and then the opposite like if i'm doing more of like a neutral eye look i feel like having a really intense inner corner highlight can be fun but yeah just hands down across the board i really do enjoy this shade okay so x was a shade that we had to make a little bit of a stretch on but i went with a shade from my urban decay wild west palette so it's the shade tex has an x in it it counts Okay, so it is this matte blue here in the corner. This by far is one of the hands down best matte blues that I have within my collection. It's not patchy, it's easy to work with. And it's from Urban Decay, like it's super surprising because I just feel like in the past with their more adventurous colors like a matte blue, they tend to not perform as well as like neutral colors you know what i mean so i absolutely love dipping into this palette and especially playing around with these matte shadows and this particular blue shade within this palette it almost has a little bit of like a grayness to it whereas i feel like my other matte blues they're either like traditional primary matte blues that are, that are really dark or they have more of like a kind of purple base to them. So this one is just a little bit different, a little more unique within my collection and it is like a favorite. Raise your hand if you were surprised that we made it all the way to Y before we featured this palette. I am really surprised that the Blueberry Muffin palette from BH Cosmetics didn't pop up at least twice. But like I said, I was trying really hard to only represent palettes one time throughout this. So this was another shadow where I knew like this is the shade that I want like from this palette. This is hands down my favorite shade from this palette. So I went with the shade Yummy here. And again, it's like a purple kind of taupey shade. It's just really pretty, really not necessarily unique within my collection, but it's just it has like a little bit of blue to it, which makes sense because it's the Blueberry Muffin palette but it lends itself so well to being paired with neutrals as well as being paired with like blues or grays or like peaches or pinks. It is just one of those really fun shadows to play around with and really push yourself. Like how many looks can I create just using like around this one particular shadow? So yeah, fan favorite. Okay, so the last one will be Z. Now for this one, again, it's a little bit of a stretch. That's mainly the reason some of these palettes that ended up in here more than once did because I had to use them to like make this list work. You know what I mean? So from within the Heather Austin and Adept palette, there is a shadow in here called 0603. 
which is her wedding anniversary if I'm not mistaken. So that is the shade I picked for Z because it's like zero, you know, that does start with a Z. A little bit of a stretch. But anyway, this again, is it kind of reminds me of the Yummy shade from Blueberry Muffin. So I'm not surprised that I actually really do enjoy this shadow. It was one that I thought of when making this list. But it's a little bit more darker than the Yummy shade. Like it's like the big sister version of it. You know what I mean? And I definitely feel like with this particular shadow, it does have like the blue kind of sparkles, purple kind of sparkles that Yummy has. But it's just, again, a little bit more intense. Like it's going to show up on your eyes a little bit better. And I think that that translates in the swatch overall as well too. Like it's easier to pick up on those little nuances within this uh, palette formula than it is with the Blueberry Muffin. But that wraps it up. Oh, I feel like I've been talking for forever and a day. So that is all of my favorite, most favorite eyeshadow shades A to Z. Let me know, were you surprised by any of my picks? Again, I would love to know if you do this video, if you, you know, uh, will let me know because I would love to watch it. You can tell it's getting later in the day and I'm getting hungry. So I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to end it here. But I hope you guys are having a good day, a good night, or a good whatever. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.